Good morning. Uh, George, any other members of the board uh, no, uh, here yet? Honest revelation made to the community of facts in these. Organizing efforts began at about 6.30 this morning at Luck Airfield in South Fort Worth. CAP pilots were briefed by Colonel Bill Cross, who is coordinating the search effort. Yesterday, about 4,700 square miles were covered by 10 planes in an area west of Fort Worth. Thompson, the missing pilot, was on a flight from Dallas to his home in Tahoka, which is south of Lubbock in West Texas. Colonel Cross said Thompson was warned of the turbulent weather of Sunday night ahead of him, but he apparently disregarded that warning. Cross said he expects to find Thompson and his plane, a Cessna 182, down west of Breckenridge. We calculated the speed of the airplane at takeoff time, the position of the storm at this takeoff time, and uh, taking into consideration the speed the storm is moving, the speed the airplane is going toward it, he was going into it right about in here. I'd say probably uh, 18 miles out of Breckenridge. It would have been almost off. The storm should have been centered right about here at the time that he can a, that he ran right head on into it more than 20 cap volunteers piloted planes today in the stepped up search for thompson richard milney of plano flew me over an area southwest of fort worth where part of the search effort was conducted late this afternoon the plane was still missing and if nothing is found the effort will continue tomorrow jim green channel 8 news on the move We're not here to threaten anybody. Uh, the authorities are no longer uh, acting uh, as sanctimonious defenders of a sovereignty uh, that ended uh, when, uh, you know, the kings granted uh, the Magna Carta in England in the uh, 14th century. And in, in essence, I, I think, perhaps I'm being over optimistic. We're beginning to develop an environment of reasonableness.
it's symbolic. It's uh, the new Terry Daniels you're looking at, Vern. Uh, but it goes deeper than, uh, you know, the appearance because like the mustache, uh, I'm going to grow too. And uh, I'll eventually reach the, the stage where I look good as well as the mustache looking good. But uh, right now I'm in a period of working really hard, Vern. And I'm increasing my discipline and desire and confidence that will eventually let me be the man I want to be. You know, there were suggestions, Terry, after you fought uh, down in New Orleans on the night before Super Bowl on the national television, suggestions that you ought to quit. Did you ever listen to those? And if you did, how did you go about discarding them? Well, the things that uh, involve what I do in boxing uh, mainly come from within me, Vern. Uh, I have the intelligence and uh, uh, the the personal confidence in my intelligence to know that uh, you know I can make the right decision. I don't need people telling me because most of the time people don't know what they're talking about. They don't know me or they don't know the situation or something. And uh, although it was suggested that well, this kid's going to get killed if he stays in it, uh, I knew I wasn't getting killed and I knew I wasn't going to get killed because uh, the, the way you do in a fight is directly proportional to how much work you put into it. And if I work as hard as I did for Frazier, or uh, anybody for that matter, I'm not going to get hurt. I haven't been hurt that bad, and uh, I certainly don't plan on it in the future. And uh, in fact, I don't plan on getting hurt or losing again. A confrontation in Memphis in 1968, which had, a, you know, in a place like Tennessee, to at least have the grace, even where they have repressive laws, to lay down uh, some machinery for being positive. Yeah. And in Texas, uh, it's all negative. Uh, but uh, let me point out that I would judge in 30 of the 50 states to either no laws or hostile laws, uh, but the existence of the union. The Dallas Negro Chamber of Commerce has no interest in protecting suspected criminals from apprehension. However, the Chamber must go on record in opposition to the needless waste of human life. The reverence for life exists above all other concerns. If we are to restore the confidence of our community in the police, we feel that it is absolutely imperative that the newly appointed City Council Committee or some appropriately empowered body fully investigate the circumstances of the shootings and render a public accounting at the earliest possible date. Whatever degree of force is needed to apprehend uh, a white criminal ought to be used, whatever necessary degree of force is needed, and whatever necessary degree of force needed to arrest a black criminal ought to be used.
Mark. Thank you. Thank you. Good to see you. How's everything going? We hope to be out soon. Not a long meeting? Shouldn't be. We hope but, uh, I, don't, I hope it's not. I hope it's not that complicated. Chi Tower, how are you? Same thing again, and we'll. Dow Jones closed. Close closed it. at an all time high of 1,003.17. That's up 6.1 from the previous close. Right now, it will close up 610 at 1,003.9. That's a new all time trading at 38 and a half on the floor. Which could mean some money depending on what the stock is and who's it's in it. I'm talking about ABC up there. Do you remember? Can I uh, do like Louis? Sure. Amazing. Is that your new toy? Demiter's happy because he finished on top of the.
fear. I think the greatest honor that can come to any techniques and programs to achieve full and equal opportunity for citizens to have an opportunity of being here today. I would like to As many people have observed, Acker Street in downtown Dallas is a walking link between the Central Business District and the Memorial Auditorium. Conventioners who come to Dallas and use Acker Street as a pedestrian way to the convention center. Considering that the convention business is a year-round activity in Dallas, there will be an even greater number of pedestrians along the convention center expansion. As a first step in this effort, the urban revitalized South Acker Street between the convention center and the Adolphus Hotel. Well, we uh, uh, did have a change of our head football coach today. Uh, this won't be on effect until the end of the season. Uh, that's with our last ball game with Tulsa University on no November 25th. We uh, felt like this action was necessary at this particular time to allow us ample time to uh, have a search for a new coach and uh, get him and get him on the job in time to have an opportunity to do a job of recruiting because recruiting, as you know, is probably the uh, greatest thing about it, an athletic program is anyway. We, uh, we did this, uh, I say did this, the action was taken by the Athletic Council uh, and we thought it was necessary uh, for our commitment to uh, display it that we still are uh, going to have a major program at North Texas. Well, I think all coaches would be concerned about anything that uh, would tend to take away from the overall attitude or performance of the team. And uh, this particular letter that you're speaking of, I haven't read. And it's unreal in that, you know, one man or uh, a group of people can write letters of people that didn't participate in football or perhaps are not really too good in evaluating things and can write a critical letter to really upset the overall environment of a football team. and. But this is going to happen. It happens in uh, politics. And, uh, people disagree with the President of the United States. They disagree with the mayor. They're going to disagree with Hayden Fry. And I realize this, and uh, I wish that it didn't happen, but it's going to happen, and it doesn't upset me. I just hope it doesn't upset my football team.
they uh, let's see. Well, the one in San Antonio wasn't a smashing success from the promoter's point of view, but both times I felt uh, I showed you know really good talent, improved uh, working technique. And Ali, I got a good indication of what Ali is like to work with because even though these things aren't uh, you know a full go, I'd say they're about a 90% effort from both uh, both people, both me and Ali, because you get the feeling it's like a sparring contest. But still, you're out there in a ring with gloves on, you're banging at each other. Uh, in the total of, I think, let's see, I've gone 10 rounds with him. I've knocked him down three times. But, you know, when Ali works, he kind of works like he's joking. And, uh, uh, you know, I'm not saying it was just me that knocked him down, but it sure is a confidence to be standing there and looking at, at the living legend Muhammad Ali laying on the deck. So, you know, from my point of view, it's a success, and uh, I hope it's a success in general. The problem is a basic one. The runway at Carswell is a north-south runway, and Westover Hills is due south of it. I asked Commander Colonel Walter Schrupp about the flights. And it's north-south, and the prevailing wind is from the south. So 90% of our takeoff and landings are to the south. The reason for the late night and early uh, morning noise is that we have a very critical training mission right now which we're required to fly 18 separate bomber sorties a week. Now to do this, we physically have to fly some of our sorties at night to generate that many sorties and also because our crews require a lot of training that can only be done at night, which requires a aircraft coming back into the local area and shooting local traffic, which does generate the noise, maybe an hour to two hours, between 2 and 4 in the morning. I apologize for it, but it is essential to our mission. Not that it's much consolation to those on the ground at the south end of the runway. We checked the schedules of the air crews who fly these missions and found some real miseries. If you think the plane flying overhead is interrupting your sleep, consider how they feel cramped on those flight decks roaming around the country in the dark. Jerry Taft, Channel 8 News, reporting. There are major changes coming in the welfare system as we know it in Texas. Here at the Capitol today, Raymond Vowell, the Commissioner of Welfare, told the Legislative Council orientation session that the next session of the legislature will not have to worry about trying to raise that controversial $80 million ceiling on welfare payments. In an interview, Vowell told me that he just received copies of new federal legislation. Congress, in the last days of its recent session, passed a some amendments to the Social Security Act, which uh, the bill was called H.R. 1. Uh, it transfers the administration of the grant program to the old age assistance groups, the blind and the aid to the permanent and totally disabled, to be administered by the federal government on January 1, 1974. So we'll need money grants for that group only for four months of the next biennium. Therefore, the $80 million will cover the needs of the state for uh, the foreseeable future. That would leave only then the uh, controversial aid to families with dependent children in that category. That's right, yes. And they uh, will uh, now uh, receive use of just about one half of that, uh, the $80 million. Will this reduce appreciably the total amount of money that the state has to spend on welfare? No, it will not. There are many aspects to the H.R. 1 that we uh, have not been able to determine what impact they will have on the state. Val has a task force trying to figure out all the changes that will become effective in the next three years. Things like family planning that's going to be required. Medical costs will go up considerably. It'll help the budget next year, but in the long run, apparently it's going to cost us more money. 
Also at the Capitol building today, State Senator Nelson Wolf from San Antonio announced that he is pre-filing a bill that will set up a 36-member commission to help the legislature rewrite the Constitution. It will be appointed by the governor, lieutenant governor, speaker of the House, and the chief justices of the Supreme Court and Court of Criminal Appeals. This should help satisfy critics who said that the commission would be dominated by the legislature. Well, in the resolution, we don't have a quota system set in it. Uh, I certainly feel that it's very important that we do have a good cross-representation on the Citizens Commission made up of black, browns, and, uh, and all segments of our society, because if we do not, I don't anticipate ever coming out with a good new constitution. One thing we did do in this, though, we did prohibit uh, any elected official from serving on this Citizens Commission to keep it independent and apart from the legislature. Wolf told me he also intends to introduce a bill which would move the primary elections from May to late July or even late August, as they used to be. He said this needs to be done just to shorten the campaign, but it's especially important to be done now so that the legislature will not be in a primary election campaign at the same time it needs to be rewriting the Constitution. It's evident that that rewriting of the Constitution is going to dominate things here at the Capitol building during the next two years. This is Roger McDonald, Channel 8 News on the Move, in Austin. The opening of the city's new convention center has led Dallas officials into a frenzy of promoting the city as a good place to have a good time, especially if your convention has a lot of money to spend. As you might expect, much of the material in the Statler Hilton deals with things city officials are going to be interested in. After all, it's a convention of city officials, and I suppose you're going to put out information on their favorite subjects. Included in Big D's efforts to convince potential conventioneers is a slideshow which, in this case, deals with city planning and the controversial sign ordinance. Other mayors, council members, and so forth are also treated to artists' conceptions of the proposed new municipal administration center and views of downtown Dallas. Whatever it took to get the official family into the promotion business, they have apparently taken well to the new task. Phil Reynolds, Channel 8 News, on the move. SCLC has promised the possibility of more massive demonstration to protest what seems to be the continuous shootings of blacks by Dallas police officers. The fatal shooting last night by Dallas police of a 20-year-old black man who allegedly robbed two hitchhikers brought that reaction from members of the Southern Christian Leadership Conference. This morning at a news conference, Chairman of the Board of SCLC, Reverend Robert Wilson, told me that the shootings of blacks by police shows an apparent lack of corrective actions by the police department and creates a crisis in the black community's relationship with the city of Dallas. The shooting last night is the sixth shooting of blacks in six weeks, four being fatal. Reverend Wilson also told me that SCLC does not condone crime, but that a white cop's trigger finger is apt to be quicker when the suspect is black. A Human Relations Commission report released last week also asserted that large numbers of minorities felt that the police department uses double standards in its law enforcement. Wilson said that SCLC has been meeting with other black organizations who will very soon reissue a list of demands to the police department. For Channel 8 News on the Move, this is June Gray. Oh, might miss, but I'll soon get all right. I'm easy suited. You know one thing, the way I look at it, I don't marry to nothing. I marry a wife, I can quit her and get another. That's just way I am. <laughs> It's not a simple thing to explain what the figure of a thousand means. I met Bill Hitchcock of Bache and Company Brokers downtown this afternoon just after the market closed and asked him about it. He told me that the actual figure of a thousand didn't mean that much, 
The market had been trying to break over 980 and did so a couple of weeks ago, but there was still plenty of excitement and plenty of people watching the tape in brokerage houses when the tape running about a minute late this afternoon closed at slightly more than 1,003. Bill says Dallas usually runs slightly ahead of the rest of the nation economically. The way he put it is that we feel a softer effect than everybody else. And he reminded me that during the recession of 70, Dallas hardly felt any adverse effects at all. He says the market had been trying all this year to close it over the 1,000 mark. Now that it's done so, the economy should pick up all across the nation, and Dallas should be in the forefront of that improvement. In fact, brokers are looking for some time...